installment of this new series where every month I share with you a color story that I think is appealing in watercolor, of course. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist. I think watercolors are the most magical of all mediums. And yeah, that's what we do here on this channel. So if you want to join us, please subscribe, ring the bell, so you will be notified whenever I post a new video. I'm starting like last month in my Cuddy logbook. I will leave a link below to all the supplies. The stamp set is currently sold out, but I hope to do a restock soon. If you want to be updated with all that, sign up for my newsletter. I never spam. I, I send out the newsletter only when uh, exciting things are happening. So that's the best way to know when these will be restocked. I do plan to restock them and I do plan to add another set, at least one more set to the lineup of the stamps. So <laughs> I was just editing uh, another video that is probably already up on the channel. It was kind of a studio session and I was going on and on about how I enjoyed this very, very limited color scheme. And then here I am expanding the color scheme. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, I, I change my mind quite often, but uh, I don't know. I just felt I wanted a bit more color. I have to say with last month's uh, color story, I was completely in love with it. It was really super easy to use those colors in uh, a lot of the projects, a lot of the other videos that I filmed for the channel. With this one, I still feel I have to play with it and kind of see how I feel about it. But I do love all the colors and I think a lot of the mixtures are quite exciting and interesting. So I'm gonna go with it and um, see what happens. I did want to include lavender and that didn't really work out, but I may try to add that as I'm painting. Okay, let's get started. The first color is quinacridone gold. I have the core version. It's a pretty standard color. I think most brands offer it. What's nice about the core um, formula is that it pushes away other colors and I particularly like that in a yellow because uh, yellow is a light color so it muddies up very easily. And also, and if I use the core one, it's just, it doesn't really blend with the other colors. If I add it to a painting or sprinkle it, it just pushes them away. And then the other reason is that I really, really love to add splatters in a, a bright, vibrant yellow or gold. I think it adds a lot of life and light to florals. So um, having that particular color in the core formula works really well for me and I missed out on all the other colors. So right next to it we have cobalt violet. I'm using right now the Rembrandt formula. It's really lovely, the tone of the color. The formulation could be a little bit improved. There's a little bit too much binder, but I bought a pan to see um, if the pan is better. So we'll see how that works. Then next to that, there's Holbein's Bright Rose. It's my go-to pink, and I really actually think that it's a good idea to carry some of the colors to, you know, another color story, not to change everything, um, because, yeah, because I still love all these colors, and I don't feel like I need to change all of them uh, every month. That's last month's um color story. So on the top row, on the right side, we have Lunar Blue. So that's a new addition also. And um, we'll see. I really like Lunar Blue. I have to see which mixtures I particularly enjoy with that color, um, just because I haven't used it as much as I have the other colors here. And on the top row, to finish everything on the first left did I say before that the lunar blue is on the left? Lunar blue is on the top row on the right. On the left side, we have nickel azo yellow. And usually the way that I use my yellows here is for the most part, like when I use this kind of color story, I would mostly use nickel azo yellow in mixtures with my pinks and then quinacridone gold as 
uh, more of like a pop of color or like a sprinkle, a highlight or something like that, an accent color. Uh, but we'll see. I'm very drawn to these super warm uh, yellow oranges. So we'll see how that works. On the bottom row, we have from left to right. Moon Glow also was in last month's uh, color story. In the middle, Daniel Smith, Olive Green. Moon Glow is also by Daniel Smith. And on the right side, we have Daniel Smith again with Cascade Green. I just thought since we're going into spring, it'll be nice to include some greens. The only green in last month's story was dusk yellow so it was kind of muted and this time uh, these are I wouldn't say they are very very bright like a hooker's green or spring green or something like that uh, but they are just as I like my greens <laughs> and cascade green has this beautiful separation uh, to a turquoise and I really like that so Playing around with the mixtures on the top row, we have quinacridone gold and moon glow. And you can see that it these colors quite neutralize each other. It only takes a little bit because moon glow is muted as it is. But if you add a little bit of quinacridone gold to it, it does turn it to, yeah, a, I would say a gray. Uh, so these are complementary colors, and I love using complementary colors. And the nice thing is that Moon Glow is a separating, granulating color, and that always adds interest. As you can see it, to what's happening in my palette, you can see that separation, that uh, blue granulation from Moon Glow. Then on the bottom row, we have a really interesting mix of Cobalt Violet and Olive Green. And... I think you can really see the um, just the the magic of mixing colors that are different. Now these two don't completely neutralize each other. I don't think there's enough blue in these two to really really get to like a a, a very gray color. We'll mostly get warmish brown yellow colors, but. Um, you can see just how lovely the slightly muted violet colors are. Those are the ones that I'm drawn to. So adding a little bit of olive green to cobalt violet really creates these beautiful uh, semi-muted and semi-neutral colors. And then another really lovely mix is cobalt violet and quinacridone gold. Again, we get like these lovely, slightly muted. I mean, these colors are a little closer on the color wheel let's say I mean quinacridone gold is an orange basically it has a only yellow and uh, red and then cobalt violet is mostly uh, on the reddish side with a little bit of blue in it but the mixtures are these lovely um, kind of like corally colors, I would say, or slightly more muted shades of like peach and mauve. Really, really lovely. And these are the kind of mixtures that I feel like I don't see enough or I didn't see enough uh, by other artists. Mostly, you know, it's like how to mix green, how to mix orange, that sort of thing. And... Uh, I really hope that like one of my goals in the series, besides exploring it for myself, like these color combinations is to show you the kind of beautiful colors that you wouldn't expect. Like, I don't think anyone, I don't know. I just, yeah, maybe, maybe people do this, but I'm like, oh, let's mix violet and green and see what happens. And actually the results are really uh, beautiful. So I have on the left side a color wheel and I'm not using it in the, uh, let's say, color theory proper way. I'm just spreading my colors. Uh, I have eight colors here, so they spread around nicely. And I just put them so that each color has a slot. I wouldn't say that it's, um, you know, correct if you want to kind of match them to the color wheel as like a tool that you get, you know, exactly where the red is, exactly where the green, it's not. But it serves my purpose here. So I would just want to show you that you can really play around with these things. And now basically what I'm doing is I'm just mixing the colors that are opposite each other. So again, you can use a color wheel in many different ways. You can lighten the tones, you can um, 
you know, try and mix colors and place them on the closest spot on a classic color wheel where they match. I've done that before. Uh, but this time, just because everything worked out so nicely, because I have eight colors, because they kind of fit around the color wheel, I just um, decided to mix the complementary colors and see what I get. And what I will say about this particular color wheel, I mean, first of all, it was fun. And of course, it's a great reference tool. But um, I really feel like it can... I don't know how to explain it, but for me, seeing the colors like this, it's not making me fall in love with this color palette. What I need to do to fall in love with a color story is to also get the dosage right. So right now for me, especially when I fill this color wheel, there is way too much like orangey, greeny colors. When I paint a floral, it'll mostly be those beautiful pinks and uh, cobalt, violet, and then all of those um, muted colors that I'm mixing now, like just slightly toned down uh, bright rose and slightly toned down cobalt violet, those will be the main colors. And then in the background, we'll have some neutrals and then uh, a bit of green. Uh, so the the ratio is extremely important for me. And yeah, and it's something to consider and it's something you might not, you know, really see if you're treating this as a very kind of scientific, proper, um, not experiment, but, you know, if you're doing everything just according to the color wheel and everything like so measured, you really have to start painting and see which colors are the stars, which colors are the main actors, and then which are just a supporting role. And then you might find that some colors you don't want to include at all in their pure form. Um, or, you know, for example, if you have two similar uh, pinks, like a pink and a violet, like I have here, or a more uh, yellow and then a slightly orangey, uh, yellow, you might choose one of them for the mixes and then the other just for pops of color, just depending on your personal preference. So the next step for me to really make this color story work is find the main colors and then the accent colors and also um, find the mixtures that I particularly enjoy and I find appealing. There is no right or wrong here. Again, I want to mention this. I mentioned this in most of my videos. It's all about personal preference. So you just basically you go through this process and you make sure that you are aware of your own preferences and how you feel about color. And for me, when I'm looking at this, um, I think this is lovely and I see what my eye goes to immediately are the, the cobalts and the pinks. And that's how I will take this color story, focus more on those colors. And then the rest is a supporting role. Now, if I want to add more color, I kind of still, I, I kind of wanted to include lavender, but I didn't want to add another watercolor. Of course I can. But instead I just went with uh, a wax pastel, which is something that I regularly use in my artwork and is a great way to add a pop of color and it won't muddy up your watercolors, especially if you use the Neocolor 1, which are not water soluble. If you use the Neocolor 2, that depends. If you use it on dry paint, then um, that's no problem. If you use it on wet paint, uh, it will kind of activate and mix with the color, which might be the effect you want. Just be mindful of that. So I hope you like this color story and I will be playing with it in the coming weeks. I'll see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.